You know, the first time I went to Dalem, I was not so long ago in in Berlin. And suddenly, you know, one of my friends told me that, you know, you should you should go there. You should have a look at this museum. So I entered and I was amazed. I was surprised. I was I was shocked at the same time. This um, museum has um, a large collection of uh, cultural objects, of art objects, of everyday objects um, from many parts of Africa, but particularly from Cameroon. Um, and we're standing now in a display called Art of Africa, um, which is an attempt to discuss the different kinds of artistic traditions in Africa. You know, this is very symbolic because you have a, you have a kind of window, a glass, a piece. You have something that is separating you from what you see. And, and what is and this, this separation, this kind of a transparent wall that, is, that is, has been pulled up between you and, your, and, and yourself? Because this is a reflection of our, ourselves collectively. It has not been done by us. You have just a, a, a very limited percentage of anything that is kept that is actually showed to the public. And when you go to the basements, you will even be denied to have access to the knowledge that is actually a, a part of your heritage. So that is, you know, a structural uh, deficit of any museum. One of the accusations that's often leveled against museums is that we don't put enough objects on display. Um, and I think one of the things that one has to think about as a museum is what stories do we want to tell, what stories can we tell, what stories can we ethically tell, what stories are uncomfortable for us to tell, and to try and be as honest as we can and transparent as we can about those things. Um, if, if someone wants to come and see a particular object here, whether it's on display or in storage, they can always write to us. Um, and if the object can be taken out and safely, do, say, safely brought out, we will do that. This is... Um, Manduyenu, it's a throne from the Bamum Kingdom in Western Cameroon. Um, it probably is the oldest one of the different Manduyenu thrones that exist today. It's, I think, pretty clear that um, King Joya, when he um, gave the throne to the German governor for William II, the German emperor, that it was a gesture that um, was meant to signify his own greatness as a king, that King Joya was himself great and powerful and not just um, a gesture that was meant to be seen as something of submission, but it was a kind of, a kind of gesture that shows your own greatness when you're able to give a, a very great or important object. It was definitely not a kind of a present that you give to, to someone when they're passing by. It's a symbol, it's a symbol of royalty, it's a symbol of dignity, it's a symbol of sovereignty. So it has nothing to do in, a in the middle of the museum. What I know about the thrones that he was, you know, like pressurized and, and, and put under pressure for years, to give up his throne. So I would ask, you know, is this a, really a present? Should we talk about a present? Or shouldn't we at least offer to return it? Ask us. Ask us whether really the attribute of our sovereignty, the attribute of royalty, the attribute of our own people, we would just give them like this as a gift. What do you want to give us in exchange of that? You know, there's no, nothing you can give in exchange of sovereignty, in exchange of dignity, in exchange even of memory or ancestry, nothing. Or, do you think of anything? 
what the Germans gave King Joy in exchange was a mechanical musical instrument, an orchestrion, that, um, that quickly broke down. And there are a number of different traditions which say that King Joy had joked that it would have been better if he'd um, asked for a stud farm, a horse farm in Brandenburg rather than um, just any old gift. I think there are some objects um, that are rightfully here. I think when you talk about things that were intended to be given as gifts, even complicated gifts, I think um, it is right that they're here. Other objects, I think um, it's less right that they're here, but I think uh, the vast majority of things are probably rightfully here, yeah. You or we all here in Berlin, we have a problem because they were acquired during colonialism. But this is where the museums are very cautious because they say, okay, there might be some circumstances by, in, in, in some ca cases where objects were taken away by force or something. But they would, and of course you see why they can hardly, you know, like say, Colonialism as such was, you know, an unlawful thing. Many museums are grappling now with how to think about the colonial era as an era in which objects were taken from their original contexts or given from their original contexts or purchased by their, from their original contexts and came to museums in Germany. And it's something that museums um, are struggling with. Um, we're trying to understand the history of how the things came here in order to better understand what it is that we can do with them. I think um, in some cases uh, we have to ask ourselves the question, should an object be displayed? Should an object be held by a museum? Should an object be repatriated? Systematic research has to be led in order to assert the origin of all these items and, at, and structures have to be put, to be set up in order for the countries of origin to be, including Cameroon, to be able to welcome them back. If there's any research on us, it should be with us and it should be with our, with our permission. When I approached um, the, the question of what I wanted to see as the basis for an exhibition in the Humboldt Forum about Cameroon, um, I thought very clearly that what needed to be in the center of that um, was the question of how the collections came to Germany and the question of colonial rule in Cameroon. The Humboldt Forum, which is the palace of the former um, kings being colonial rulers, in Berlin. So you've got a, an imperial palace and what you have decided now is to put in all the objects these um, emperors have ordered to be brought here. And you've got a very post-colonial, neo-colonial project now. I think, you know, it would be a mistake to try and um, get rid of this collection collectively. And I think keeping pieces from this collection, even difficult pieces from this collection here, is a constant call to try and deal with the complexity of the history of colonialism and Germany's part in it. And that to me is very important. This is true, this is part of German history, but it is also part of uh, African history, of the different or countries in all, all the world. So it's part of an entangled and for shared history. So we should find a way to, to tackle this uh, in a joint way, to, to, to have a dialogue on them and maybe to have curators from the countries here or maybe from the diaspora living here in Berlin. I mean, it's not, you don't have to go to Cameroon to get a specialist on these objects. You find them here in Germany and Europe as well, Cameroonians living here. So then you might find a way to present them in a different way or maybe return some of them. Germany could return every month one object and we could do this for the next 500 years and make everybody happy. So, so this is even how I, I could the Humboldt Forum as well. I could imagine it as well to work, you know, like a, an entry to or a gate to, to for return.